So hello, this is our first um, exercise, practice a first liquid C program. And we're going to do this in class, but in case somebody is missing the session or if you want to listen to it afterwards, you can follow this instruction. So uh, this is also what you should be able to get um, as a PDF. Um, and the first thing is that you go to your um, computer and you type CMT, get the command prompt. And first thing you want to do is you want to pin to the taskbar. So I've actually already I think, pinned this here, but you should find something like pin to the taskbar. And then you'll be able to find this um, this program down here in the taskbar. So I'm just going to open it here. And you'll see it will open this uh, the so called terminal. So uh, that's where, where we are right now. And at the prompt, type um, the following command. The prompt is this little thing here. If you see, that's the prompt. And it expects you to enter commands afterwards. So the command to enter is GCC minus minus version, which tests if the compiler, the program that will create a, an executable for you that you can run exists on this computer or not. It needs to be found. And this is good. There is a GCC version. For this simple program, it doesn't really matter which version you have. Um, we're going to talk in class about how to put that on your own PC, but in the lab, on the lab computers, you already have it. So now we need to uh, get started um, downloading something. So there's a link here. I'm just going to click on that to open it. Um, this is our GitHub, um, our, my GitHub um, uh, repository. A bunch of different uh, things in here. You can see that for all my courses right now, this link, you will get to the org repository. And in the org repository, there is a Emacs repository. Um, we'll click on that. And then inside there, you find at the top, you find a file called .emacs. Click on that, here's the file. Now, this is a configuration file that Emacs, the uh, software that we're going to use to edit our programs needs in order to um, work properly. So um, this contains a lot of extra information. So what you want to do here in order to download a file like this, you want to click on the raw. Then you see the, uh, the raw um, code. And now you can do right click and save this file as you go to downloads, make sure that you save this in downloads. And um, it, Windows will insist on um, saving this as emacs.txt. And there's really no way to do anything about that. So we're going to just save it in emacs.txt. Um, and now we do not need the browser anymore. So we can just do roll it down again. Um, now we've completed this step. Uh, we have uh, downloaded this file. Um, now the file is not called .emacs, the file is called emacs.txt. And in your um, command line, you need to actually go to the directory where you just downloaded it. To do that, you type the command cd, which means change directory, downloads. You see the prompt will change and tell you that you're now in the downloads directory. And here you're gonna check um, you're going to change the name of your file that you just downloaded, and you're going to type um, mv for move. Actually, we're going to do the name. I think that's better than name, but just the command in, the, in, in Windows. Rename emacs.txt to emacs.emacs. It's really important that you that you have this um, this dot in the name before. So you're going to take this file and rename it as that file. Now the meaning of the dot is that it's a hidden file. So until you make a change in your file explorer, you won't be able to see these files which only the computer uses. So let's try if that works. And it does, because if you can now do dir.emacs, you will be able to see it. There's the dot emacs file. Um, you can any at any time when your screen is too full, the screen will run through. But if you don't like to see what you just typed, you can also just type clear to 
Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. So um, we're now um, already here uh, in the terminal. Um, and uh, usually the file, we have actually uh, didn't need to do this. I just realized we didn't need to rename it, but we did that anyway. So um, we have to change these instructions a little bit. We had instruction number 11. We're now going to open the uh, Emacs editor. First of all, we're going to do the same thing that we did before with GCC. We're going to type Emacs minus minus version to check if the file is there. And there it is, which means we can call it. And now we're going to call it. We'll call it as Emacs um, minus NW um, minus L emacs dot text sorry emacs dot emacs because we just the name so that's what you need to enter now in my case i already have an emacs file so i'm going to add something else which is minus q uh, you can do that too it won't won't disturb anything but um i'm going to do this for me you only need to enter uh, as chosen the file this this stuff again now, um, what you see here is, is a command that really consists of two parts. The first part is the name of the command. And the second part is option. It's a number of so-called flags. Every flag is an option. So this option means no window. This option means load the following file, in input Emacs. And this option means uh, quit, uh, do not enter the standard file. Yeah, so you don't need to worry about that. So we're going to do that, and uh, I'm going to enter it, and the screen should change. And what happens is Emacs opens inside this term. And I won't explain too much about Emacs right now. I just want to get through this uh, exercise with you, uh, because we're going to spend a lot of time here. But basically, uh, this has two, two parts to it. The first part is the buffer in which you see stuff happening. And the second part below here, the below this right line, is the so-called mini button where you see messages and where you can also enter your commands. So we're now inside Emacs. We are at this step, number 13, and we're going to create a file. And to create the file, we press Control X, and we see in the mini buffer CX, which stands for Control X, and then we press Control again and F. And this means you hold down the Control key and you press X, and then you hold down the Control key and you press F. You can see it says find file, but we want to create a file. So we want to type the file um, uh, at the end of this prompt. We're going to type it first dot org and then just press enter. And you see the new file. It's empty. It's an org file, which you can see here from the ending. And it also shows org here in this. Uh, qualifier for this buffer. This is a so-called org mode buffer. Um, at this uh, point, do not worry about these uh, options up here. We will not need, need them. You can use this Emacs editor and the IDE entirely from the keyboard. You never need the mouse. The only reason I use the mouse is to go back and forth between my two windows. So now we need to enter a little bit of text here. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger here for you. That's the text we need to enter. We're going to do that. So, um, and here it's important that you do not uh, miss out on any spaces or anything like that. It needs to be exactly as it is shown here. So, the first thing is called metadata. So, for example, you can see what I made a little mistake here. You can see it looks different from the text in my script. Instead of um, yellow, this is just white. And if I add the proper sign here, you can see it changes. So the computer actually recognizes that this is something special. If this is missing, it's nothing special. It's just text. Otherwise, it's something special. This is called meta information. And now you need to put a space here. And after the space, you give this file a title. First, see program. Then you press Enter. You go to the next line. And you do the same thing. And you can do this um, in big caps or in small caps. It doesn't matter, actually. Author. And here you put your author's name. I put a name here, and you put your name, and then you say pledged. 
because you signed the honor pledge, which means that you did this on your own. Now, the next thing is a headline. So um, the headline is, is a star, is indicated by a star. It's a one level headline. And then the headline itself, my first seed program. And just for good measure, you could actually put a second headline here. Is, uh, this is another headline, it's a second level headline. Um, and you can have a third one as well. And you can see they get different colors. At the moment, we only want one. So, and by the way, if you type something and you don't know what to do, you can go to the beginning of the line, either with your arrow keys, or you can press Control A and Control K to delete it. You go one line down and you write the text. This C program runs inside Max or Mode. Both of them. That's our documentation. The documentation consists of two parts, namely a headline and a little bit of text. And we have two lines, which is called meta information to tell um, Emacs what to do with this file. Uh, now we're going to create the code block itself. Now, uh, fortunately, you don't have to type everything that's here on the screen. Instead, you can just type smaller, smaller sign, followed by S and then click on the tab key. And this will expand into a code block. The code block is this area. And everything in this area is being executed, in particular the stuff that's inside here. So um, we make this into a C code block by writing C. And now Emacs expects C code in this area. And then we're going to say we want the results um, space output, we want it output in the file. And later on, we want to tangle this code block into a C program, which means we want to create a C program that we can run. Okay, now comes the actual text. And in, in this case here, the white space, so if you start this in the first line or, or if you press tab, which is what I habitually do and you end up in the third line, that doesn't matter at all. But everything else needs to be exactly as required. So you have to write hash include. You cannot write like that. You have to have one word hash include, space, and then smaller stdi h. We're going to explain later on what that means. And then we're going to create a function, an integer function main, which is void, so it doesn't take any arguments. And the function um, sits between uh, between two um, brackets. And any time, by the way, if you wrote this anywhere and you press tab, this will actually be moved to the right place. And um, this program has only one command. It's a print command, print with a particular format. And the format is given by the uh, uh, quotation marks. And the quotation marks include what's called a string. The string is called hello world. At the end, we're going to do slash n, which means go to the next line. Close the print command. This here is the, um, inside the print command, this is the argument for the print function. So it says print this. And to know what to print, uh, it recognizes their quotation marks. So there's a string here and we print that. And then the program, sorry, the command has to be closed by a semicolon. The very last thing we need to avoid getting any warnings, we need to type return space zero semicolon. And that's it. That's our first uh, program. Oh, we made some mistakes. If that happens to you and you make editing mistakes, um, you should call me or um, it's going to probably happen to some of you because your fingers are going to dance nervously on the keys. And um, inside this editor, every uh, every key that you press probably has some um, effect until you know how to do that properly. You'll probably make a lot of mistakes. We're going to do a proper tutorial for Emacs and keys. Okay, we have done this. That's very cool. We've got the file. And uh, actually, there's something else I did just now without even thinking about it. Namely, I um, um, didn't save the file. Uh, and what you want to do here is you want to save the file. So I'm going to actually, um, before you save the file, you can run it. And remember, running means uh, that we run the code. The code is in here. 
Um, and uh, to run it, you have to have the cursor anywhere between here and here. Anywhere in this area should your cursor be. That's the blinking thing. And if you press anywhere here, Control C, and then Control C again, it will execute. And you can see the result of our operation in here. So it prints in the world. That's your first program. Um, and now you want to save it. And if you noticed before, um, when the file was first created, these uh, there were no two stars here. Um, and if you go over with your mouth on the first stars, you can see the first star means the buffer is writable, and the second one means the buffer is modified. So you put something in there. And if you save it with Control X, Control S, so press Control X and then Control S for save, the file will be saved, and you can see that the the uh, all the three uh, markers here are now the dash. And the moment you enter something. It changes again. And save again. X converts. At the bottom, you also see it wrote the file in a particular location, and the location is as expected in your user directory inside the downloads directory. That's where this file resides. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to create some source code, which means we want to take this code inside here, this bit, or this bit. And we want to write that into a file called first.c so that the computer can run it. Now, we already ran it, but we ran it inside Emacs. We want to write it outside Emacs because we don't need, we don't, don't want to need this interface. So let's do that. To do that, we use another key, uh, key sequence. Uh, it's a little longer. It's control C, control V. And it's indicated here. That's the stuff that you see down here. Control C, Control V, and then um, so do it again. Control C, Control V, and then T for tangle. And the report is one code block was tangled, and the code block that was tangled results in a file first dot C. Um, not going to go through this at the moment, but uh, but we basically at the moment what we're going to do is. We just went from foo.org to foo.c, and now we're going to compile the file into an executable file and actually run it. So this is shown. We're not going to do the stuff at the bottom. I'm sure that in class later, but we're only going to do the up, the root at the top here. So we're at step 19 now, almost done, and we're going to open another buffer. So this is a buffer. It's an org mode buffer. We're going to offer open another buffer. Um, by typing uh, alt x, that's the alt key, alt x, which in the Emacs is shown as mx. The m stands for meta. And uh, the reason for that is that the alt key on some keyboards, for example, on the uh, Mac keyboard, is not actually alt. But on the Windows keyboards, it's alt. So you can just type alt x. And then you type um, e shell. You just write the word e shell, which means Emacs shell. And then you press the end key. And this will bring you to another buffer. This is a shell buffer that looks actually just like the, I'm going to show it to you. Oops. Looks just like the, um, the shell that we use to start the Emacs buffer. And um, we're now going to uh, um, look if the file is there. And we're going to do that with the list command. Uh, actually, you can just type uh, dir um, star first star. That will work as well. And you can see there is a bunch of different files here. Um, and the two files, uh, these files here are files that I created earlier. But the files that you will see is first.c and first.org. You shouldn't have any other files. And so um, uh, you can. Um, also look at that file with cat um, that may or may not work on your computer. I don't know, I'm gonna just try it here. And if you do that, you see the file. I have to look um, what the um, um, what the cat command is in Windows. I'm gonna can say that later, but don't know everyone what the point is. Um, and now we're gonna compile it, compile the file using the GCC 
compiler. It has to be GCC. It can't be GCC or GCC or anything like that. It's a small class GCC. And we're going to compile the first the file first.c, which we just created. We're going to call the output hello. So this is another one of those. Here's the file. Uh, here's the software we are running. This is the target of the software we are running. And here are the options, which are options. What you must do is GCC in the name of the file. Stuff at the end is option. You run that, and you saw it went really fast. And if we now um, do dir again, um, you will see that there is a file called hello. This file hello.exe, that's the one we just created. You can also go, um, if you want, you can go dir hello. hello. If you see hello, dot exe. And to run this file, all you have to do is type hello. And you see hello world. That's what uh, our file um, was supposed to do, print hello world. Okay, now next thing um, we want to do is uh, we want to uh, exit and close Emacs because we already saved the file. We do that with Control X, Control C, and we're back on the other shell, which is where we started the Emacs. Now this shell has a history. All the shell com shell softwares have histories. Like if you go uh, on your upper arrow, you can see the different commands that you typed. Remember at the beginning, you were asked to type the GCC version. If you go down arrow, you go down in this history. And the last command is starting Emacs is still here, yeah? but we don't want that. Uh, at the moment, we just want to exit this shell, type in exit, and it will disappear. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to, um, um, uh, we are here now, you need to save your file to a directory on your G drive. And there's different ways to do this. You can either do that uh, with the file explorer, if you know how to do that, you can do downloads, and we have the file here, here's the file first.org, that's the file we're looking at, that's the file we want, and you can just uh, um, drag that if you want into your G drive, if your G drive is visible, that's the one possibility. I'm not gonna do that now. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of other possibilities. Uh, in a moment, um, uh, you can also um, do that inside Emacs. I'm gonna show how that works. So for that, we have to Go back to the uh, search bar, type command again, open the uh, thing. Remember the history. Now it, the history is unfortunately gone because we exited. So we unfortunately have to write this command again. I'm Emacs minus W, minus Q, minus L, dot Emacs. And you will have to go to downloads because otherwise the file will not be found. Struggle with the Windows shell here. Downloads again. Downloads again. I'm going to the Emacs. Here we are. I'm going to find my file. Actually, I'm going to find my file again. First, go to org. By the way, what you see here is uh, the reason why I type so fast is not because uh, I can type so fast, which I can, but, but because I have the tab button. And the tab button actually will complete anything that's possible. And it will increase, it will uh, incrementally complete. So if I have down, it completes whatever starts with down as loads. And if I have first, it will propose different files start with first, and I want the org file. I have that file and I want to save it. This is the first uh, suggestion here. The commands are only on the left-hand sides in green. This is just comments that I inserted to let you know what happens here. So I have this file and I can control X, control W it. Control X, control W will write the file to downloads, but I don't want that because it's already there. Instead, I want to go back with the back delete key and want to put it into the W. Uh, uh, directory, which is where the uh, my drive resides. So if I if I do w 
colon and then slash tab, you can see that my drive is there. This is where I'm going to write the file. And it's already there, so I'm going to go to write it in this case, but now it's been written. Okay, and now I have it in the G drive. The other possibility is to do it um, in the shell. Remember to do that, MX or old X E shell. And unfortunately, we're already in my drive, so I have to go back to, um, to user downloads, clear. Okay, so if you're in this um, in this shell, and you have the file um, first.org here, it's there. You want to copy it, CP. And I think the command in Windows is P. copy first.org um, to a new file, namely in the W drive, my, and this will also complete. So I only all I did is write my and completed the whole name. Or you can copy it from the script um, into first .org here. And that'll uh, copy is not found. So maybe the command is CP. But yeah, that works. So to check that, um, I'm going to just look at the, uh, at the uh, W drive again and see if the file is there. Oops, that's actually not what I wanted. I don't know. Thing. I think it works. I'm going to use one of my commands and just to check that this actually just did it. And here you can see the file is written here. Um, and now it's in G drive. Okay. Remember, you can just go outside of here, out of here with Control X, Control C. I just did that. Okay. Exit. And now what we want to do is we do not actually want to open uh, the file explorer. We're going to upload the first file as your first in class assignment. To do that, here's a um, um, exercise that will be prepared somewhere. So yeah, here you can see it. So this is the student view. That's what you should see. And somewhere here, non-graded assignments in our course. Uh, you can see upload your first C program. And if you click on that, um, this is not at all because I made a mistake. So forgive me, I just need to fix that quickly. Make sure that there is a submission possible. Just save that. We do that again. So, student view. And if you click on it, you see this. And you can now, under more, you can go to Google Assignments. And here you can uh, select the file. And you should find the file here. First domain. Here it is. So I can click on it, add it, attach it. And the file is here. You can see it's attached. And now I can submit the assignment. I will not do this here because then I cannot uh, unpublish the exercise. So if you submit assignment, everything. So I'm going to leave the student view and finish this exercise. All right, and that's it, pretty much. Thank you very much.